Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're talking about a new series and starting it with impact drivers. Don't worry, the other series with the drills, recips, and circular saws is not done yet. We just, you know, don't have any more of those tools right now to review and keep up with those series. But as we get more tools and or more tools are released, we'll continue on the series with those uh, or those series, right? So, but today we're gonna be starting with impact drivers and we're gonna be talking about this impact driver right here, the Makita three-speed brushless quick shift impact driver. Uh, we're gonna go over this tool top to bottom, put it on a track, you know, get some numbers and stuff like that. See how other tools can compare. Stick with us. This right here is the three-speed quick shift brushless 18 volt LXT impact driver. It's model number XCT14 and it, you know, it's been around for quite a bit. Let's get into the marketing hype and then we'll bring you in closer and take a better look at it. All right, so this is Makita's 18 volt LXT brushless cordless quick shift mode three speed impact driver. It features quick shift mode, you know, to use this uh, motor's electronic controls to find the best balance of speed and power. It has a powerful brushless motor that delivers up to 3600 RPMs and 1500 fifth or 1550 inch pounds of maximum torque. It's ergonomic uh, and compact at roughly four and five eighth inches long. You know, it's comfortable, rubberized grip and that kind of fun stuff. It also has a tightening mode for faster tightening of self-drilling screws. It helps prevent damage uh, to the screw and or the workpiece. It has a three speed selection. Let's go ahead and get these numbers out the way. Uh, on speed one, have zero to 1100 RPM with zero to 1100 IPM. And on speed two, has zero to 2100 RPM with zero to 2600 IPM. And on speed three, zero to 3600 RPM with uh, zero to 3800 IPM. You know, so you can really uh, select whatever range works for you. It has a brushless motor that delivers up to 3600 max RPM, which we already talked about. Uh, we can probably drill into that a little bit later. You know, the brushless motor, electronic control, it has XPT uh, protection technology. It says it weighs only 3.3 3 pound, 3 .3 pounds with the battery. Um, I, when we measured it with the five amp hour battery, it came in around uh, three pounds, 5.5 ounces. So, you know, that may be something you need to look at. So it's fairly lightweight, right? And it comes with a three year limited warranty. All right, so this right here is obviously the left hand power tool if you're holding the tool, right? Um, so as you would expect here, there's not too much really going on, pretty standard impact driver stuff. All this black stuff here is rubber over molded. If you gave me this tool blindfolded and you just held it like this, you would know that it's a Makita tool, right? No frills, no thrills. Uh, brushless here, Makita emblem going on here. It's got, you know, brushless on here, just in case you didn't know the tool was brushless and they really wanted you to know that, right? So uh, that's what's really going on here. You know, it's, it's fairly lightweight. I think we already covered the weight, but it comes in right around, um, was it? like five, three pounds, 5.5 ounces with the five amp hour battery. So it's, it's fairly lightweight, right? Um, anyways, other than that, there's a forward reverse switch going on here. Pretty standard, no issues. Uh, this belt clip is reversible on the other side. We'll go uh, talk about that in a bit. But on the back side here, it's flat. We'll also say brushless here. Has a little clip right here uh, in case uh, you need to tie a lanyard or some kind of hook or some kind of fall arresting device, something like that, right? Um, on, the back, on the other side here, the right side, this is exactly where you would put the belt clip if you did want to put it on this side. And there's a screw hole right there. Not all tools will allow you to do that. Um, but most tools will, and this is one of the tools that will allow you to do that, okay? Uh, the other thing going in on this side, as you can tell, pretty much exactly the same as that side, right? So moving around to the front here, um, we can, let's go ahead and talk about this LED light, right? So there's two diode LED light, right? Or two LEDs, if you wanna call it that way, uh, right there. And it is, you can turn it off and you can turn it on with a long press of this button here. So there's one button down here that allows you to switch between the modes and uh, control the light, right? So if I long press this button here, it will turn the light off and you can use the tool without the light um, in case you wanted to work in stealth mode uh, for whatever reason, which doesn't make sense because it's a loud tool. Anyways, uh, other than that, uh, or you just want to conserve battery life by, you know, a few seconds or something like that. But, you know, I would say most people like to uh, work with the light and I do like to use the light because, you know, a lot of times you're in cabinets or, you know, someplace you just nice to have the light, right? Uh, other thing going in on here, uh, right here, we'll go and talk about this control bar. Um, it has three speeds. It says H for heavy duty applications or high or whatever you want to call. And there's a S for slow. It cycles through all those with this uh, button down here, you know, and it will remember which setting you're in, right? So right now, let's say we're on speed two. Take the battery out, right? Power off. 
put the battery back in, it'll come back on on speed two. And one, uh, one bar where S is, that's low. You put it here, it's a tightening mode and it's designed for like self-tapping screws and things like that. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, I have not had any good luck with that. Uh, I've always just found it either to be too fast or, or the uh, ratcheting down mechanism uh, doesn't really respond quickly enough, right? Especially if you're just doing like metal, the metal, uh, like sheet metal, really thin sheet metal uh, studs like that. It doesn't really work that well for that. Uh, so I don't really use it that much. Um, I know some people will probably say, oh, you're probably using it wrong. And you know what? I would say there's probably something I'm doing wrong, but I think a lot of people or the other people I know that have um, a pretty similar feature like this, most people don't use it that way, okay? So maybe it's just me, but you know, it is what it is. Um, we can talk about that in a little bit, right? But uh, right here is the variable speed trigger, right? And it is a very nice variable speed trigger, pretty much same thing you'd expect in a Makita tool, right? So here's on speed high. Goes really fast, right? Do it again, speed medium. And speed low. So I uh, did want to point that out. Um, right here is a quick change collet and a, a, it's a semi quick change. What I mean by that is you can insert uh, quickly, right? Because you don't have to pull the collet out to insert, right? Lock right into place. But uh, when you pull, uh, pull the, you have to pull the collet to pull the bit out, right? And then when you pull it out, it will stay open. So it kind of inserts really quickly. There are some impact drivers, you know, that, you know, you'll push a button or something like that, they'll kind of shoot the bit, uh, the bit out or something like that. But, you know, not a lot of impact drivers have that, but this one kind of, or this one also does not, but it does have a quick insert type deal. And if for whatever reason, let's say you pulled the bit out, right? And then uh, you messed with the collar like that or so, right? Then it will not let you insert. Uh, in this case it did, but not all the time, not every time, right? So like that won't let you do it right away. So if you keep messing with it, you know, it'll get you, but you know, just don't mess with it and just be a normal person and use it as it's designed, right? Just pull it out, right? And you can put it in real quickly. Um, a lot of people will say, oh, it is also a one-handed uh, insert. And it is, yeah, I mean, you can, don't get me wrong. You could definitely just, you know, put this here, pull this, push it in, no problem. But most people I see, they always do this. Right, so anyways, that's what's really going on with that. So this right here is gonna be on speed one. Let's take it to speed two. And speed three. All right, so without too much further ado, let's get into the testing. But before we get into the testing, let me just go ahead and give you uh, pretty much since the first video, what the uh, test is really gonna be. Similar to the drill test, we're gonna have a lot of similarities. So if you want to compare numbers and stuff like that, impact versus drills, we can kind of do that. Uh, but there are just a little bit of differences, right? So let's get into that. Uh, first thing I'm gonna tell you, we're gonna do th three different types of tests, right? And each type of test is gonna have pretty much three runs. Um, we're also gonna measure the, uh, uh, driving forward and also driving reverse, right? Obviously driving reverse is gonna be um, a lot faster mainly because you know there's not as much resistance in pulling a bolt or something like that back out, right? So anyways, uh, the first test is gonna be an eight inch timber lock, right? We're gonna drive it in, we're gonna drive it out three times. Uh, we're gonna then move on to the five sixteenths inch by six inch lag bolt, right? Uh, we're gonna drive that in three, uh, drive it in, pull it out, do that three times. Um, and the moving on to the half inch by eight inch lag, we're gonna drive that in and pull it out pretty much three times. And then we're gonna take the average of each of the sets and then we're gonna add that up to get the total performance score, right? So uh, what we did was we pretty much got, was it like two by eights or two by tens or something like that? And we laminated all of them. Uh, we did laminate a lot of them. Um, was it, I think it was like eight, what is there like uh, six or something like that, maybe six. I think we had laminated, uh, we did laminate uh, quite a few of them when we laminated the ones with the, uh, for the, that we set up for the drill test. Um, that way we don't have them, you know, all varying too much and they're all laminated around the same time and we get them all from the same lumber shop and all that kind of fun stuff.
All right, I hope you cut those numbers because those numbers went by pretty quick. Uh, some of them did not, but some of them did, right? So uh, we'll go ahead and do a recap, right? So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, we're gonna throw up the forward and reverse on the screen, uh, but we're not gonna necessarily take those into account, uh, mainly because I just don't really feel like they provide that much value, but we'll put the numbers there just in case you did uh, care about them, right? But we're only gonna go over going forward, right? So. Without too much further ado, let's get into it. This XCT14 with the five amp hour battery uh, on the eight inch Timberlock test. First run, 5.23 seconds. Second run, 4.51 seconds. Third run, 4.53 seconds. Taking an average of three runs comes in at 4.76 seconds, all right? Uh, oh, we'll go over the average of the uh, reverse test, 2.97, right? Um, five, moving on to the 5 16th inch, inch by 6 inch lag test. First run, 7.49. Uh, Second run, 5.49. Third run, 6.57. Taking an average of three runs comes in at 6.52 seconds. The reverse average comes out to around 2.59 seconds, right? Um, moving on to the half inch by eight inch lag test. First run, uh, 25.65. Second run, 25.72. Third run, 25.27. Huh, they're all 25s, all right? Interesting, um, a lot of consistency there. Uh, taking average of three runs comes in at 25.55 seconds, all right? If your uh, reverse, um, reverse, reverse average comes out to a 10.75 seconds. The weight of the tool with the battery will come in at three pounds, 5.5 ounces. And I pretty much rated the trigger response as good. It's very subjective. Uh, response may not be the best word for you, caught sensitivity, control, whatever you want to call it. But I'm going to say trigger response and generally rated it as pretty good. And I can say it's pretty good, mainly because I have used some other impact driver and I was like, man, that trigger response sucks. Um, but uh, so the total uh, performance score of this tool right now comes in at 36.82 seconds, right? And that is the first place on leaderboard because it's the only one on the the leaderboard, okay? So, um, I mean, that works out generally pretty well, okay? So, um, what can we really say about this tool? Okay, so let's go talk about it. So, uh, this tool, uh, they market it has like quick shift technology, right? And go ahead and say, you know, whether it does or whether you're using it or whatnot, um, it doesn't really matter, I would say. Um, I kind of tried to email Makita support or something like that about it and trying to find out more literature because there's not a lot of documentation and literature out there. But uh, what what I was able to find was quick shift generally from speed three, and as you're uh, impacting and going down, as it gets more and more resistance, it actually steps down to speed two so that you don't break and strip uh, the piece or uh, the screw or the bolt. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. That may play a role into so much consistency on the half inch uh, by eight inch lag test, but you know, I thought that was pretty interesting. There's no way, I don't see any way your buttons or anything like that to engage it. If you search for a quick shift in the uh, owner's manual, it doesn't even appear. The word quick doesn't even really appear in the owner's manual. So anyways, I'm just gonna mark that up to marketing hype. Um, I'm sure it's probably doing something or electronically controlled that they say, but you know, there's not too much about uh, that in the manual. Other than that, what can we really say about the tool? So like I said, this is pretty much a great tool, pretty much standard Makita stuff. Uh, when it comes to refinement and stuff like that, I don't feel it as much in this tool as you would feel it like in like a circular saw or a drawer or something like that. Um, in a Makita, uh, in, in, in any impact driver, there's obviously a hammer hitting an anvil and spinning that kind of stuff. So there may not be too much need for it, but I would say it's a great tool. Uh, should you go out and buy this tool? Uh, it depends. If you're looking for a Makita impact drive and you're in the LXT lineup, yeah, I'd probably go out and buy the tool, right? Now's a good time to say, we did buy this tool. Nobody sent this to us. Uh, this came as a part of a kit when we bought the XPH07. Um, so it all kind of came like that. But like I said, nobody sent this to us. Not a sponsored video. We can say whatever we want anyways, but we do that anyway, so it really doesn't matter. So, um, um, like I said, it's a great tool. It does the job that it's designed to do. We don't use it quite a ton, mainly because our go-to ones are gonna be the subcompacts and the oil-driven ones. Uh, we'll go ahead and add more uh, uh, impacts and stuff on the leaderboard as we go ahead and get to it. Um, but uh, we're gonna, we have a few impacts go through. So we'll go ahead and add those in. So like I said, I hope this video helped you guys out. Uh, if you have any questions or anything else, let us know. Otherwise, have a great day and we'll see you guys next time.